One of my favorite lines of Aaron's, which is funny but also terribly sad, is I think it's when I was eight. Uh, my hair was my room. What are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, in the foster home, my hair was my room. Which is so sad when you think about it. She just covers her face with her hair and she's alone in a room. Who is she? Sad, but also funny. I would describe Erin Hannon as a well-meaning, cheerful, um, sort of happy-go-lucky kind of lady who had a rough childhood and I think has some secrets and maybe some inner demons, but we don't always see that. I think she tries to think the best of people. She might not be the best at her job, but she's pleasant to be around. <laughs> Aaron, I need you to fax this and get me a confirmation pronto. Are you going later? Sure, if you are. Yes. Talk to me that way again and I'll cut your face off. Whoa. My favorite part about playing Erin was the comedy. The writers on The Office are so brilliant and they gave her so many lines and pieces and story and, uh, stories and plots that were really funny and so unique to her. So I, I, I always looked forward to reading the next script to see you know, what she would do. And also, Erin was in the show plenty, but not all of the time. So as a supporting character, sometimes you get more like crazy bits to do, which I really enjoyed playing. My favorite quality about Erin was her um, sincerity and naivete because she believed what she was told. She was a very pure being and I think that like, you know, Dwight might say something that she would take at face value because she had no reason to think anyone would be tricking her. And she, pure is the word I think that springs to mind. She just wanted to believe what she was told. <laughs> hey, my name is Tabitha. I'm camped out in front of the Sabre store so I can be first in line for the new pyramid. Psst. It's me, Aaron. Dwight and me pretend to be a hipster to create hype, and it's working. There's already people camped out behind me. I was a huge fan of The Office before I got a part on it, and I joined at the end of season five, and I remember thinking um, during my audition, as Aaron, I was reading with Ed Helms and I thought, you know, this is the most exciting thing that's ever happened to me career-wise, so if it ends right now, that'll be fine. Well, no, it wouldn't have been fine because then I wouldn't have gotten a part in the office. So, no, the, the greatest thing of all was then learning that I booked the part and I sort of lost my mind. And getting to work on the show the first day was surreal because I had seen all these characters for years in my on my television, so I felt like they had been in my home. And so I knew all of them and I think it took a minute to realize, well, they don't that television doesn't work both ways. They don't know you. So it is surreal to feel like you know people and then to actually arrive on a set and, and meet them in person. It was, it was, it was like, I won the lottery. One, two, three. Yes. Okay. Mm. <laughs> what? <laughs> Woo! Woo! Oh. Jiminy Christmas. <laughs> Jiminy Christmas indeed. Hit her up. Oh, oh yeah. One of my favorite episodes is Secretary's Day. Um, I love that episode because, of course, it's all about Aaron. It was written by Mindy Kaling, who is a genius, and there was so much comedy in that, but also a lot of um, emotional uh, uh, baggage. My favorite part about being a receptionist is that I get to have my own desk. Mm -hmm. In my foster home, I never had a desk, so it's like a... I, I don't mean that I didn't like my foster home. I, I did like it. I just didn't have a desk there. Did you have a favorite age? And it's a lot between Aaron and... Uh, Michael Scott, which to be in a one-on-one -on -one scene with Steve Carell was just exhilarating. And I remember the day we shot the scene in the restaurant, it was just one of the most fabulous days of my life because I got to spend all this one-on-one -on -one time with him and acting with him, and he was a hero of mine, and still is, and so um, that was one of my, selfishly, one of my favorite episodes. I also love Cafe Disco because it's so silly, and why are they all dancing downstairs? And Michael Scott keeps calling it Expresso. And I love any scene, any episode where I'm called to dance. So that was a lot of fun. Aaron and Andy were such a great couple because they were also a little bit on the outside of things. And so I think they shared that kind of um, uh, worldview. And so putting them together, they were a couple oddballs together. So one of my favorite Andy Aaron scenes is actually, I think the first episode I was in, the first or the second, and it also involves Dwight. Because Aaron, this like rube, joins the office and for some reason, I think just because she's new, Andy and Dwight are sort of dueling for her attention. You finding everything okay? Yeah. yeah. Got some ice. 
<laughs> nope, this is awkward. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> and I just, I was so thrilled to be there in the first place, but it was really funny to like play the comedy of that, not even love triangle, but just um, these two very strange characters dueling for this little Rube's attention was a lot of fun to play. Aaron. Yeah, is there a follow-up follow question? <laughs> Filming the finale was overwhelming because there were so many amazing guest stars and also it was the end of the show. And I was a late arrival on the show, as I mentioned, so I think it was maybe a little mysterious to the rest of the cast why I was so I broke down in tears basically every day everyone's like you I've only been here for four years but okay I'm an emotional woman it's so amazing to see people respond to the show still now especially younger people who were definitely too young when the show was actually on but now can watch it in reruns and I think what resonates with people is it's an infinitely relatable experience it's whether you work whether you're at school it's everyone identifies these characters in their own lives um, they're sort of portraits of people that they know personally. So there's a heart to the show. So it doesn't just feel like you're watching some kind of, uh, I don't know, uh, sugary sweet show. You're watching something that has a lot of emotional depth to it. So I think that's what people respond to. And a lot of people, if they are talking about the show, have mentioned that it's helped them through a tough time, through an illness or through a difficult time with a loved one. And I, I really, I think this because I watched it before being on it. It's a healing show and I think it's very powerful. And um, I'm glad that I got to be a part of that, but I'm glad that a show like that exists in the first place. Because they're not, you don't see a lot of shows like that these days. <laughs>